fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty, I owe silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. There's trouble on the range. And Silver, boy! The Lone Ranger, his Indian companion, Tonto, and his nephew, Dan Reed, stood in the patio of a little mission. They were known to go there whenever they were near, and the padre was one of their closest friends. It has been a long time, amigo, since you last came here. We've been far away, Padre. I know. Many stories come to me of the noble things you do. I hear much that is good. I'm glad, Padre. You have a boy with you. Now, this is Dan Reed, my nephew. Your nephew? Oh, I'm glad. You, Dan, may be proud of your uncle. Thank you, sir. I, I am proud of him. I hoped you would come, amigo. For some days now, I've had a message for you. For me? Is there trouble? I do not know, senor. Here is the letter. Thank you, Padre. It's from Washington. From General Meadows. Golly, if it's from Washington, it must be important. Ah, what letter say? Some weeks ago, we were sending a large shipment of arms, carbines and ammunition to the West to be sold at auction. The shipment never reached its destination. The train was looted... Many rifles stolen. Is that what it says in that report? Yes, Dan. As nearly as the investigators can decide, after the rifles were stolen from the train, the outlaws set it on fire. There was nothing left but a mass of twisted metal. It was hoped you would come for that letter, amigo. The man who brought this letter still around? He can be reached. I see. There have been many clues, but none of any value. Uh, this doesn't say whether it is definitely known that outlaws stole the army rifles. The investigator said it might have been the work of Indians. Have any Indians been found with army rifles? None. Unless... Well, unless what? Unless you and your recent travels have seen Indians with such weapons. Well, golly, we haven't seen any Indians with rifles for a long time. Oh. Uh, it is too bad. Too bad? I had hoped that you... Padre, could... why did you hope to learn that Indians had robbed the train and murdered the crew? For the sake of one man in particular. Someone who was suspected? I cannot say he is suspected. Well, then what are you... Uh... Amigo, it is not for me to fasten suspicion upon any man. I have not and will not do so. But there is one against whom things have been said. One whom I would like to see proved innocent. Who is he? He is new to this country. Of all who have heard of the theft of rifles, no one has brought forth an idea as to the guilty persons with the exception of the sheep herder named Durgan. Durgan? Yes, Sam Durgan. Well, I've heard of the Durgan Ranch. 
He's been in this country for a long time. So long that while he raises sheep, the, the cattlemen do not complain. Perhaps if you talk to Durgan, he will tell you whom he suspects. You will not tell me his name? See. See, you and are to be trusted. Well, then I will say it. His name is Rogers. Jeff Rogers. He has settled between the border and the Durgan Ranch. Is it far, Padre? No, no, say no. About a day's ride from the mission here. I can show you. I have here a little drawing. Take it. You wanted me to go there, didn't you? Well, I'd hoped the Indians are guilty, but I... Oh, we maybe reach place by sunset. And Victor can travel as fast as Scout. Let's start Let's right now. goodbye again, Padre. Amigo, after your long ride, you need to be refreshed. Another time, perhaps, Padre. Thank you for your help. We'll set out for the Rogers farm right away. Come, Dan, Toto, Mount up. Uh, Is a big fella? Perhaps on the way you can question Durgan. His land borders on Rogers. He may have information. Uh, thanks, Padre. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. Come on, Victor. Adios, amigo. Adios. Adios, Silver. Hi. Later that day, when the sun, a ball of fire, sank into the purple haze, the masked man and his companions, Dan and Tonto, rode toward the ranch owned by Sam Durgan. On the way there, the Lone Ranger took the time to remove his mask, and with Tonto's help, carefully disguised his face. There was no one in sight as they rode up to the entrance. Oh, sir, oh, 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 oh. Hello! Hello there! Hello! What's your business, stranger? Just traveling? In a way, yes. Are you Sam Durgan? Yes. Now, we've come from the mission. I think you know the Padre. Oh, sure, sure I do. Who's the Redskin? Friend of mine, Steady Big Fella. Hi, Savvy. And this is Dan. Hi there, Dan. How do you do? What'd you say your name was? I guess names don't mean much out here. <laughs> All right, traveler, just as you say. Come on inside. I expect you could do with a bite to eat. Golly, you sure have a lot of sheep around here, Mr. Durgan. As fine a flock as you'd find on this side of the Mississippi, son. Make yourself right to home. Yeah, thank you. You probably think it's funny, me being a sheep man in what might be called cattle country. I understood you'd been here for a long time. Yes, that's right. Uh, sit down, sit down. Oh, thank you. Right. Yes, I was here before the cattlemen moved in. Never had a bit of trouble till the nester came. The nester? Yeah, Jeff Rogers. He settled south of you, didn't he? Yes, confound him. I used to graze my sheep all the way to the border and beyond. Now he's come in and wants to fence his land. Yours is fenced, isn't it? Well, sure it is on the sides, but I never had no south line fence. What sort of a man is your neighbor? Doggone peculiar. Most suspicious acting cuss I've ever seen. He's ready to shoot a man at the drop of a kind word. Sometimes men who come here to farm find themselves unpopular with the neighbors. Maybe he has reason to be on guard. You ain't come from his place, have you? I told you where I came from. Hmm. Ain't trying to pump me. Well, I'd like to hear more about your neighbor. Well, maybe he has got reason to be on guard. But it ain't because he's unpopular with his neighbors. It's because of something he wants to hide. Something he wants to hide? As soon as he landed here, the first thing he did was to build a shack. To live in? No, of course not. If he built a place to live in, it'd been all right. He built a place to hide something in. And he did it before he even thought of a place to live in. He's got that shack locked tighter than a drum. A couple of boys went there to look it over, and he didn't even introduce himself. He just opened fire. Hurt anyone? Winged him. Here's what strikes me mighty odd. Yes? He came here just after the railroad was held up. Oh, I see. And he shot at the boys with an army carbine. There. Golly, that sure sounds suspicious. What do you think, Toto? Well, maybe we go have talk with the fella. Well, if you do, you'd better go ready to shoot. We'll be on guard. Well, by the way, mister, I, I got a pretty fair idea who you are. Oh, you have? I'd be willing to bet two bits you came here to investigate that robbery. Durgan, do you mind if Dan stays with you overnight? No, no, of course not. Oh, look, I... You've had little chance to learn about sheep, Dan. All right, but you don't care as much about me learning about sheep raising as you do about keeping me out of the way when there's likely to be gunplay. And there's still some time of daylight left if you ride fast. You can get to Jeff Rogers' place before dark. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode up to a tiny house on Jeff Rogers' land. But before they could dismount, a thin, tight-lipped man appeared on the small wooden platform in front of the door and stood rigidly pointing a heavy rifle until the Lone Ranger spoke. Steady, Silver, steady. Uh -huh. Don't go any further, stranger. State your business. 
Put down your gun. Oh, you get and get quick. What would you gain by shooting me? Why don't you find out first why I'm here? I'll find that out afterwards, stranger. Do you shoot at everyone who comes to see you? I sure do. I pick off them coyotes before they can get me. Like you do, too. Rogers, that's very dangerous for you. You'll get yourself in trouble. People who come here to talk to you aren't always planning to hurt you. I know different. Not unless you've done them a wrong. That ain't true. i never done no wrong to anyone. They'll get me just the same. Well, this time they won't. What are you talking about? Mr. Funny thing. If I wasn't suspicious of every ornery cuss that come in here, I swear you was on the level. Who's bothering you, Rogers? All of them. Whole doggone lot. He's got them all on his side. Who? Durgan. Durgan? Yeah. That dirty sheep tender. Sometime What's I'll... he doing to you? Uh, all gone things can't be no worse than they are. I'll tell you, mister. Fine. Go on. He's been trying to force me off this land, see? Ever since I come here. It's my land. Registered right and proper. The government gave it to me to homestead. He's got no right to it. He's been using this land to send his sheep over the border to graze. He can't do that now that I'm here. He's so... got plenty of grassland on his ranch. Sure. But he sends them sheep just the same. I started to put up a fence, but he drove me off. I wouldn't mind if that was all he'd done. What else did he do? Well, he sets folks against me. Tells them I'm crazy-like. Talks to everybody about me. Even over as far as the mission. Why, that's kind of quiet, fella. And he got him to wondering what was in that shack of mine down there. Run them all down here to open it and see for themselves. Uh, what happened? Well, mister, I... Well, go ahead. Well, I, I shot at him. I drove him away. There ain't no one going to see what's in that shack but me. Stop where you are, Injun. What is it, Tonto? Scout, make move to shack. Oh, Rogers, uh, Tonto's my friend. Yeah? How do they suspect you're hiding there? How do I know? Well, uh, how did you get that rifle? This ain't a rifle. It's a carbine. I had it when I was in the army. A train load of those was stolen. Did you hear about that? No. Some people think you stole them. What? So that's what they're saying about me. Why, that dirty... I'm going to see what's in that shack. Oh, you ain't. I got no rifles there, but I'll shoot any man that tries to open that door. No, you won't, Rogers. Steady, Silver. You're not a killer. You heard me. Get away from there. I swear I'll shoot. I've heard of a lot of tricks to get me out of here. I know what'll be done if it's ever learned what I got in there. I'll shoot you if you go one foot nearer. I'm going all the way, Rogers. Will you open it for me, or must I shoot away the lock? Injun, that man's a friend of yours. Tell him to stop. I don't want to kill a man. I never have done it. A... Oh, me not stop him. Stranger, won't you please... You're not a killer. You're just a farmer who wants to live in peace. I... Oh, I, I can't do it. I know I should shoot... But I can't. Wait. Wait, mister, don't shoot the lock. I'll open it up. You out-bluffed me. I'm not bluffing, Rogers. I'll open it. Go ahead. Open the door and see what I got. Then go tell the ones that sent you here how it'll be a dead cinch to make me leave this country and go back where I came from. Open the door. Thanks, Rogers. <laughs> curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. The door of Roger's shack was opened wide. And the Lone Ranger, disguised but unmasked, saw the great secret of the small, well-guarded building. Grain. Grain is right. Seed. I brought all that here from the east so as I could plant my crops and harvest the finest stand of grain this country's ever seen. I see. I put every cent I had into that seed. If I don't get to plant it, I'm licked before I get started. If these coyotes would resent a farmer coming here wanting to drive me out, all they'd have to do is set fire to that. They wouldn't, Rogers. They would. They'd do that if they have to, if they know it's here. But I won't even get the chance to plant it with a Durgan sheep grazing my fields. 
That's why I wanted the fence. Your fields don't look as if they'd been grazed recently by a sheep. Oh, Durgan's men drive them past here and over the border. They graze in Mexico ever so often. Oh, I see. But, uh, as to robbing trains, did you really get told I'd done that? Yes. Oh, well, maybe I did act suspicious. Hey, look, Durgan sends you here? Rogers, I'm going back to Durgan. Meanwhile, Dan Reed found himself increasingly interested in the sheep ranch. On his horse, Victor, he rode to the outlying buildings and studied the methods used in caring for sheep. He noticed several corrals, some of them well filled with sheep that hadn't been shorn for a long time. Hey, kid, where do you think you're going? Oh, boy, oh, I hope Victor. You heard me. Where are you going? By golly, nowhere. I was just looking around. Who is it, Pete? Uh, it's that kid that's visiting the bar. Snooping, huh? No, sir, I wasn't snooping. I was just looking the place over. Mr. Durkin said I... I don't care what Mr. Durkin said. You get back to the house and stay there. The night air ain't healthy around here unless you're used to it. I was just going over to look at that corral. Is there any harm in it? You heard what I said. Go on back to the house before you get yourself into more trouble than you can handle. Hey, boys, got this lead sheep fitted with the straps. Button your lip. Straps? (coughs) Here, let me see. Found it. What'd you go and shoot off your face for? Who's this kid? I thought he was one of our boys. Well, he ain't. Get away from there. Hey, wait a minute. Grab the kid. I got him. Let me go. You can't. The kid knows. Now we got to do something about it. Help me. Hold him. He's strong. You can't keep me here even if there are three of you. Here's a rope. Fix your hat on you. Look out for that horse. Watch out for those hoofs. Hang on to that kid. Don't let him go. That's it, Victor. Atta, boy. He got you. Come on, Victor. Dan headed south at top speed, racing through the night in the direction the Lone Ranger and Tonto had ridden before darkness. Meanwhile, they had headed north until they met the boy. What's the oh, boy? Oh, 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 oh. Man, uh, what are you doing here? I found out something. We saw three men following you. They turned back when they saw us. Who were they? They were working for Durgan. They were after me. And what'd you do? I wasn't stooping. I, I was just looking around. Why were those men after you? I saw one of the sheep fixed up with leather straps, holding a rifle under his chest. Wait a minute, Dan. Be sure of your facts. I am sure. They had several corrals filled with sheep. I think every one of them was fixed like the one I saw. And Durgan was taking those sheep to Mexico to graze. I'll bet those are the stolen rifles. Dan, I sent you to the wrong place. Well, it looks to me like you sent me to the right place. We'll correct that mistake as soon as I get my mask on. Tonto, make sure it's tight. Uh-huh. Let me fix it. Keep riding south, Dan. Stick to this trail and you'll come to Jeff Rogers' place. I'll join you there later. I'd like to go back. Get going. Yes, sir. Get up, Victor. Come on, Silver. Get up. Come on. <laughs> Plenty sheep and corral over yonder. Yes, I see them. There are some men there, too. Ah. Maybe we catch crooks now, huh? Maybe, Kimosabe. But only part of the gang is here. I'd like to get the rest. We'll go closer, Tonto. See if we can learn their plans. All right, there's nothing to be gained by blaming each other. Got it. Got a off his mouth. Get up. Thing you do is get the last of the rifles delivered. You mean we're to strap the rest of the rifles to the sheep and take them all to your partner? That's what I mean. That kid will tell his friends what he saw. Those friends will head for government men and bring them here as fast as they can. How soon do we start with the sheep? Right away. Take the first of them now. Tell the rest of the boys to leave as soon as they can. Right. And we're to go right across Rogers' land? Well, of course. How else can you reach the border? You see anything of that kid or his partner, shoot him. How about Rogers? Uh, Shoot him if he gets in your way. Now get going. I have Lefty and the boys load the cases of ammunition as soon as they come in. Where are they? They were on the range. I sent for them. Oh, good. You need help with the ammunition? Well, the cases are all piled in the line shack on the east boundary. Lefty knows the place. I'm sure he does. You try and do this right. As soon as Lefty and the others arrive with the ammunition, you're to get the cash from Carl. He'll have it ready. And see to it that you bring it straight back here. We will. All right, get moving then. I want every last one of those woolly critters south of the border before sunup. Otto, there's no possible way to stop them without getting lawmen. That's right. Once those rifles are south of the border, that's the end of them. Uh, oh, but wait. Uh, what we do? Come to the horses, hurry. What, what matter? Otto, there's a chance. The padre knows of a government man, remember? Uh-huh. He said he could find the man. Go and tell the padre that the government man is wanted badly. And what you do? I've got a job to do in a hurry. But it's just as important that you take that message to the padre. Tell him to get all the help he can to Jeff Rogers' home and hurry. Uh-huh. <laughs> Silver, we'll travel now. On your way, Kimo Get up. Come on, Silver. For 
With Dan that night, there was little sleep. In the darkness of Jeff Rogers' cabin, he lay through the long hours, wondering where the Lone Ranger was and what he was doing. He could hear the heavy breathing of Jeff Rogers, who slept on the other side of the room. And then Dan felt a strange sensation. At first, he thought the distant rumbling was the thunder of the gathering storm. But the sound was too sustained for that. As the sound increased, Dan raised himself on one elbow, listening more intently than before. He muttered, Sounds like cattle. Then Dan rose from his bunk, glanced at Jeff Rogers in the moonlit room. Uh, Maybe I ought to wake him up. He hesitated, then stepped silently to the door. Great day at sheep. Hey, Mr. Rogers, Jeff, Jeff, wake up. Wake up, Mr. Rogers, listen to me. It's the sheep. What's that? I told you about Durgan and the sheep. They're coming. Yeah, I hear them. Holy smoke, there must be hundreds of them. We've got to do something. We've got to stop them. Get back inside here. Oh, but Mr. Rogers, don't you remember? Durgan's the one who stole the rifles, the army rifles. I don't give a hoot if he stole the artillery. You ain't messing around with that outfit. Oh, but if they've gotten this far, they'll reach the border. There's nothing to stop them. If the Lone Ranger had wanted you to stop me, he wouldn't have sent you here to stay with me. All right, if you won't help me, I'll go on alone. They're almost here, I tell you. Oh, do no such thing. Let go of me. You listen to me. Did you lie when you said that tall man was a Lone Ranger? I never lie. Then who in Tuckin do you think you are? If the Lone Ranger himself didn't see fit to stop them sheep and the men driving them, who are you to step in? Now you stay inside here and hope these men just go by without stopping to kill off any witnesses. Mr. Rogers, I'm sorry about last night. Well, what about it, Dan? What are you sorry for? I guess for a minute I fought pretty hard to get out of this camp. Ah, it's all right, son. Take a look out there at the way the ground's torn up. They sure must have driven those sheep hard. Yeah, you can see what had happened to any crops I had planted. Look, Mr. Rogers, something must have happened to the Lone Ranger. I've, I've got to ride north and find out. What was the last thing he told you to do? Uh, well, it... All right. It... And you stay here till he comes. Hey, there's someone coming. Look at the cloud of dust. Let me see. It's the Lone Ranger. Well, see, he's all right. But where's Tonto? You can ask him in a couple of seconds. I've got to get to Victor. I'll be all saddled in case we have to leave in a hurry. Suit yourself. From now on, you're in his hands. Hold on, hold on, ho, ho. They all went over the border. Yes, I know it. Then, are you ready to travel? As soon as I saddle off. This boy is sure... Rogers, one... listen to me carefully. You heard the sheep go by during the night, didn't you? Sure I did. They'd have been heard ten miles away. Did you hear anyone come back? Well, I heard a few horsemen ride past. Going north? Yes. I heard them too. Good. I'm hoping there'll be some more in a little while. If so, we may get Durgan and his gang. Yeah, but how? The rifles are all south of the border now. They're out of the country. Come on, Dan. Cinch up and we'll ride. I'd sure like to be in on whatever happens next. Somehow I got the notion you still hold an ace or two up your sleeve. Come along, Rogers. You bet. Durgan sat in his ranch house with a tidy pile of gold before him and some of his most trusted men at his side. This, boys, is a payoff. Well, it's about time we cashed in. I've been waiting a powerful long time. Yeah, me too. I'll pay just what I promised and a bonus for doing a first-class job. Yeah, I just wish we'd taken the time to get that dog gone, kid. Hey, you're a fool. As it stands now, there ain't a thing the kid can say that can hurt us. Rifles ain't in this country. If you'd kill him or anyone else, we'd have a murder to worry about. Oh, we have. Can't prove a thing now. Hey, boss, that crazy breed and his men are coming. The breed? Carlo? Carl or Carlo, whatever he calls himself. Well, what's he doing here? I saw him in Mexico a few hours back. He's got a couple of wagons and all his men. What? Well, if he wants trouble, he's coming to the right place. Let me see. See? Well, uh, what's got into Ooh. him? Oh, hold on. Oh, oh. oh Durgan. I came to see you. What are you doing here? When I make a deal, I keep my word. Well, what about it? I pay in cash, but I got swindled. Carlo, you're a liar. Yeah? Well, we just call the whole thing off. I told you what I could sell the outlaw outfit I contact. I said I could sell rifles and ammunition. That's what you got. I got rifles, nothing to shoot in them. So I brought the rifles back in those wagons. I take my cash if you don't mind. You'll take those rifles and clear out. You got what you paid for? That's right, Carlo. We delivered. Suppose you look in the cartridge cases and see what I got. There's no need. Uh, There's the evidence, evidence, men. The sheriff. And that government man. You with the mask. Listen, I... You'll find the carbines and the wagons, men. These crooks are the rest of Durgan's organization. Throw down those guns. Shoot anyone that reaches for a gun. Oh, wait. Enough has been heard to make the case, Durgan. Carlo, you dirty double-crossing rat. You framed me. You brought that stuff back here just... I did not. Look for yourself. 
You did not give me cartridges. There is nothing but rocks in the boxes. Heavy rocks. Every box had rocks. Rocks? They had bullets when I looked. <laughs> What's the difference, Durgan? You're a sure trap now. And with the rifles for evidence. All right, you needn't rope me. I know when I'm trapped. I reckon these government men don't take no chances. Carlo, if I thought you had a hand I'm in I'm in this... as deep as you. I would have been safe if I had not come back here. Hey, wait. If I got the bullets, I would not have come back. Maybe you did not mean to swindle me. Of course I didn't mean to. Someone switched the bullets for the rocks just to make me come back here for the cash. That is what happened. <laughs> you bet someone did. Rogers, now I think you can build that fence and plant that grain. I'll be the biggest planter in the West. All right, big fella. Come on, Silver. I'll Silver. Silver. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>